This February, history will be made. Millions will watch as 80 years of unjust stigma is left in the past. A product that drove good people to the black market will be revealed as one that's creating a new global market. This February, what inspired this symbol of counterculture will at long last be seen as just culture. The new normal is coming. Will you be one of the first to see it? Visit MedMen.com to watch an exclusive preview. Hey, everyone. This is your jabroni name entered here, Andrew, a.k.a. Uh, Big Brother Boy at The Brothers Commonplace. Thanks for checking out our podcast. Just a quick disclaimer before we start. We are a comedy podcast that covers many serious events. We are here to purposely offend or disrespect any of the people in our topics. But at the same time, we will make our best to try and take each other laugh and crack jokes. I fucking hate you guys. I fucking what do you hate, hate us. I can't, I can't fucking just, do just this. Just keep going. Just say the last couple. All we'll right. Thanks again for listening. Be good. Stay late. Oh, my God. <laughs> Be good, stay late. <laughs> stay <laughs> late. Stay late, stay late, and stay late. Stay as late as you can. Listen to it like four more times. Fucking stay safe and laugh at the dark stuff, for God's sakes. Thank you. All right, fellas, like we practiced. Yeah. Two, three, four. Come on down. Come on down. Hanging with the brothers tonight. Come on down to the Brothers Commonplace tonight. Alrighty, welcome everyone to another episode of the Brothers Commonplace. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mama. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> So today was going to be a mini episode because we couldn't all get together on Sunday due to the weather, but this might just end up being a full episode. Nice. If it does turn out to be like a shorter mini episode, we'll try and do something special for you. Um, I'm not quite sure what yet, but let us know if there's something you would like and we'll go ahead and do it. Maybe we'll record a song and based a, on a case or Most something. likely be nudes. Or Damn you, Primo, send, nudes. Yeah, we'll probably nudes. send nudes. Nudes. So, alrighty, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. What's up, guys? This is Tim, or the next Arnold Palmer, as they were going to call me for that damn alligator bit my hand off. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, dude. That was good. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Awesome Andrew, a.k.a. Anel. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yes, dude. And y'all know me. It's the kid, the Cleveland Strangler. And today, we'll be talking about Brian Douglas Wells, the pizza man that you probably have never heard of, mm. unless you've seen the movie... 30 minutes or less i have seen that movie and i still had never heard of him and the thing is yeah he's not even a character in that but yeah. that <laughs> movie has a super strangely specific and similar plot to this mm. and the creators of that movie said oh yeah we've never really heard of that case uh, i might have heard of it but it's like the exact details oh, like yeah. the smallest details so they're probably bullshit yeah but before we jump into that is there anything you guys want to talk about real quick well, I also heard that they stole the storyline from like the Pizza Strangler of Mississippi movie too, so <laughs> it sucked pretty bad. Yeah. So August twenty eighth, two thousand and three, Brian Douglas Wells would be sitting down on the ground outside of a bank after an attempted robbery. His legs were crossed and a bomb contraption like from the movie Saw was attached mm -hmm. around his neck. Police stood around watching as the bomb collar began making beeping noises for a few moments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there is a video of what happens here. So if you guys haven't seen it, look up Brian Wells video or just pizza bomb video. I'm sure it'd show up for that. Yeah, it's it's bad. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go further to say what happens, but you're going to giggle. It was, it was straight gold. I loved every, like, 45 seconds of it. Yeah. And unfortunately for this poor pizza delivery man, he was about to, in fact, become a pizza himself. <laughs> or pizza-like, if you will. But this pizza is no ordinary pizza. For this pizza would be covered in religious cheese, <laughs> oh. a.k.a. Swiss cheese. <laughs> and I know you know what that means, Timmy. Oh, this cheese is holy. <laughs> Just like this poor son of a bitch's chest after this bomb <laughs> blows a fucking bowling ball size hole right in his chest. Uh -huh. A hole so big that not even the fattest tie would cover it. <laughs> but then again, there would be no need for a fat tie because Brian Douglas Wells would instantly be fucking deader than a doornail. Oh, fuck yeah. 
fuck yeah, dude. I had like a super oh. bad joke to go with Andrews, but uh, it, it's not going to go let's, good coming after that. Let's fucking hear it, dude. I mean, Andrew was saying how he enjoyed uh, the whole 45 seconds of it. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what every girl tells me after we have sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's mid-cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and I've already got up to pee twice. <laughs> oh, God. So this is one of the strangest cases that I've ever researched. So... Let me, Andrew and Tim here, just teach you a little bit and maybe even steal a tiny piece of your heart. Ooh. Oh, you already did that earlier. Ooh. Like I said, this case is real strange, so it's going to be kind of hard to follow, but here we go. 2.28 p.m. on August 28, 2003, a 46-year-old pizza delivery guy by the name of Brian Douglas Wells walked into a PNC bank in Erie, Pennsylvania. Not to interrupt you, but like as you're saying that, I'm like hearing like the law and order, like dun dun, dun and it just shows it happening. <laughs> Maybe I'll enter that in. Yeah, dude. you should. You should. And I think it's kind of fitting that the name of this town is Erie. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I, I do agree. I don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. So, Andrew's got us. Brian carried with him a two-foot-in-length homemade cane that was actually a shotgun in disguise. I love that. And there's pictures of the cane. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And there's also photos of him robbing the bank while holding the cane. This thing is just fucking ridiculous. Mm. You mean mm. Big Daddy Cane? Big Daddy Cane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Is that just a scary movie, too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, there's photos of this. Uh, look it up because it's, oh, yeah. it's insane. The whole thing, this whole thing is funny. It shouldn't yeah. be what it is. No, it, it sucks because, I mean, we already mentioned that the dude fucking died. Yeah. But this, this case is fucking weird. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're going to giggle. And uh, the cane wasn't the only strange thing that Brian had with him. He also had a bomb strapped around his neck underneath a white T-shirt that simply read Guess. And I think it was Guess Jeans. Uh So, hey, Tim. Guess guess Jeans. Guess Jeans. Uh, Let's see. Levi's, (laughs) Wranglers. Cut my hair. That's in the Brady Bunch movie, which is super awesome. Watch it. Don't even listen to the podcast. Go watch it now. So, a quick note, though, it was said that Brian Wells had been a pizza delivery guy at the pizza place for, like, 30 years. I've also seen a source that said 10 years, so it's either 10 or 30 or somewhere between there. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that's, like, really inconsistent. And he was considered a valued and trusted employee, albeit a little slow. And he wasn't, like, retarded or anything, but he was considered slow. Mm. And the only time that he ever missed a day of work was when his cat died. Or after the bomb one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't even get that out. Oh, shit. That was good. So Brian walks in. He hands the teller a note that says, gather employees with access codes to vault and work fast to fill bag with $250,000. He then added, you have only 15 minutes and lifted his shirt to reveal the strange bomb contraption that was strapped to his neck and chest. So yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's more than DB Cooper that we just covered. Yeah, and uh, if you want to know if he gets the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, he gets pretty close to it. Oh so. my God, yes, no, he doesn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> the bank, <laughs> the bank tells him, "Yeah, sorry, there's no way we can actually get into the vault, but here's eight thousand seven hundred and two dollars." Yeah. Brian then took the money. He grabbed a sucker from the counter. Oh fuck! Stuck yes. it in his mouth and walked out, but not before telling the banker that he would come back later to collect the rest. You uh. know, the remaining two hundred and forty-three fucking thousand dollars, oh whatever the God, fuck it is, two hundred forty-two thousand. Yeah, I didn't know about the sucker. And yeah, and that's what's weird in the photos of him because there's actually a bunch of yeah, pictures I saw the of pictures him when yeah. he robbed the bank. Yeah, he has uh. a sucker in his mouth. Nice. That's really hot. But. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell if the people were like, yeah, we can't get in there. Mm. If they were for real or just because they knew there's something fucking wrong with them and they yeah. weren't buying it. I mean, I'm like, guessing. Yeah, here's eight grand. The the shotgun, it wouldn't be that scary seeing that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. with that guy coming in. like, no. I, I feel like if I saw this dude, look at this guy. No offense to him. I know he Yeah, died, but look at him. But yeah. look at him. If he yeah. came in with a gun, there's a bigger chance he's going to fucking shoot himself. Oh, yeah. And, or accidentally kill himself before he'd hurt anyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't remember seeing anything about if that gun cane actually worked. I don't know if it did. It doesn't look like it. I couldn't find what yeah. size shell it used either. I looked yeah, all over. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant by, by saying if you see that, it doesn't look like that works at all. So. It's a guarantee that it fucking worked. That's <laughs> well, why he I mean, used it. And Andrew masterminded the whole thing. I did. Fuck yeah, I did. So if this doesn't sound weird or strange enough, just wait. 
And right now, we are going to go back in time. Mm. We're going to go to the early afternoon of that day. Mm. So it's the same day, but we're going to go to the early afternoon. And we're going back to kill Rob Schneider. We're going back to kill Rob <laughs> Schneider. <laughs> Again. Uh, so at Mamma Mia Pizzeria, which is where he works. Oh, my God. In the, <laughs> in the early afternoon that day, Brian gets a delivery order of two pizzas to 8631 Peach Street. Yeah, this and, is And awful. actually, his boss, I think, answered the phone, but he wasn't familiar with the address. Yeah. So Brian took the phone call. Yeah, it's And they funny. said it was at the end of his shift. Yeah. But he still decided to take it. And this address is just a few miles away from the pizza place. I love where it's at. So Brian... He drives to deliver the pizzas. He's a good employee. Mm. And he finds that the location is actually the location of a radio station transmission <laughs> tower yeah. at the end of a dirt road. So at that point, I would have been like, no, fuck? yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm, and fucking eating the pizza on the way back. Oh, yeah, yeah. But not Brian because he's a good worker. I mean, yeah, exactly. So Brian Wells, he is then approached by two men. He tried to wrestle them away and run, but they overpowered him. And then one of the men fired a gun off, which caused Brian to comply and quit trying to escape. And squirt and shit his pants. I, well, yeah, I would, yeah, I would too, probably. I always think well, of... shit the pants. I didn't realize you said squirt until a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> Squirting! <laughs> squirt. I always think of like him singing the Krusty Krab pizza song. <laughs> So, I mean, Pizza. look at the picture of that guy just thinking of singing that song. Oh, God. The whole time, dude, I giggled the whole time researching this, man. Oh. It's sad because this fucker died. No. But it is fun. It's mm. one of those things it is fun. Like, it's not funny. It is funny. It happened in what? Two thousand assholes, but it's fun. It happened in 2003, right? Yeah. Dude, oh, there's been enough time. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's, it's not too soon anymore. So, next, the two men strapped the collar bomb to his neck. Gave him the homemade cane shotgun and gave him a list of instructions for him to follow. And all he had to do was complete four tasks before the bomb was to go off. And you can find the instructions online and the actual notes are pretty fucking creepy, actually. Oh, yeah. At the bottom of the note, there is a warning written on it that said, There is only one way you can survive, and that is to cooperate completely. Act now, think later, or you will die. I like the fact that they, uh, in the movie Wild Wild West with uh was it will smith and kevin klein yeah that they pretty much stole this part except they didn't blow up but they could have Dude, i was just gonna say this really does remind me of wild Wild west yeah i used oh, wait, to have i think wild wild west came out before this though i used to have the fucking wild wild west sunglasses that came out from burger Fuck King. yes I dude oh, wait, a we like, all had oh, I gotta get those. we all had that shit dude uh, also, wait, so they stole this from Wild Wild West? Wild Wild West came out in the 90s, I'm Holy pretty sure. Oh, shit. It, I mean, well, dude. I wouldn't say stole. I doubt the guys who did this are watching Wild Wild West. I mean, like, if, I got a fucking idea. I mean, if they were, then that Remember was, that what, three people that watched? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Three people watched Wild Wild West. We know that now, including all us. Three, all including three us, years. so there's six. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. So as he completed each task, he would be awarded more time. And in the notes, they pretty much state that he must go here to this location and retrieve this item, or he must return this item here and find a key. So there were four keys that were used for the collar for him to order, in order for him to take it off. And there's also like a combination lock on it, so he would need to get the different combination numbers also. When they when they say you had to do these things to get more time, like this is so stupid. I legit did this when I was reading it. But I thought of like in Sonic when you're underwater oh, that and you're going for that fucking oh, air and fuck shit, dude. That. Yeah, like like you have to like find those little air bubbles, dude. I thought of that the whole time. That noise is that music. Yeah, is one of the fucking scariest. Oh yeah, it's not quite as scary as when you're playing Friday the Thirteenth and oh NES he's coming. Jason Voorhees yeah, Jason's coming. Oh yeah, scares yeah. the fuck out of you. Yeah, but that noise is right. Yeah, because you're like fuck. I'm about to die. I better find one of those air things. But yeah, that reminded me of that. I don't know why. And so the note also says that you will be watched at all times and you should not tamper or mess with the collar because tampering it will cause the bomb to detonate. So let me read a description of the bomb collar I found online. So this is just word for word what I found online. There are pictures of it too. Yeah, there's there's pictures of it too. It mm. looks like a fucking giant like uh, a oh. giant handcuff around Dude, the neck connected to a bunch of shit. What it reminded me of is like the top of a pop can kind of. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah like I a little bit. I completely agree. So the device consisted of two parts, a triple banded metal collar with four keyholes and a three digit combination lock. 
and an iron box containing two six-inch pipe bombs loaded with double-bass smokeless powder. The hinged collar locked around Wells' neck like a giant handcuff. Investigators could tell that it had been built using professional tools. The device also contained two Sunbeam kitchen timers and one electronic countdown timer. It had wires running through it that connected to nothing, decoys to throw off would-be disablers, and stickers bearing deceptive warnings. The contraption was a puzzle in and of itself. It sounds like something straight from fucking Saw. No, it it does. Yeah, the guys that did this had to be smart as shit. So the very first of the four stops was the bank. Which would be one of the only stops that Brian actually got to. So that sucks. You got a fucking bomb around your neck. It's like, all right, first stop. You have to rob this fucking bank. And if you haven't seen Black Mirror, there's an episode that's kind of just like this. Like this guy gets blackmailed into doing all this shit. Really? Kind of reminds me of this. This is a pretty cool episode. See, I, I only watched the first episode. I got to watch that. Yeah, it's pretty good. So now we're going to go back to the bank robbery. So after Wells had robbed the bank, he got in his car and drove off following the instructions of the note and dropping the bag of money off near a drive through sign at the nearby McDonald's. But he didn't get very far because, I mean, if with the McRib back and all, oh. you know you're not going to fucking oh, just drive him. by the drive through without going in and getting Dude, the fucking McRib. He has enough money, man. <laughs> I think I think he probably saw uh, D.B. Cooper in there and they, <laughs> you know, they eat the fucking McRibs, the McRibs together. Rib. Yeah. There was no McRibs left because they had to get the ransom for the <laughs> fucking crew. <laughs> I heard uh, the reason why he didn't finish it all is because he was waiting for them to fix the ice cream machine. So. <laughs> He's Fuck. like, I need more time. <laughs> Just give me more fucking time. What if like he had like an hour of time <laughs> and he spent it all waiting on the fucking ice cream machine? <laughs> He's just in McDonald's and just fucking blows up. This happened in 2003. He still hasn't got his fucking ice cream. So Brian went to the McDonald's, dropped off the money behind the drive through sign, and about 15 minutes later, state troopers noticed that he was standing outside of his car in a nearby parking lot. He was quickly surrounded and handcuffed, and he sat cross-legged on the pavement in a really awkward way. Hmm. And the reason I mention that, because if you see the video, the pictures of him right before that thing blows up, it's the most awkward-looking Yeah stance or most awkward looking pose to sit in yeah it looks it's like, really weird and it kind of adds like the creepiness yeah it looks it. like a, almost like a like weird like yoga pose or something yeah it's weird <clears throat> so brian tells the police that three black men had attacked him while he was out on delivery and then chained the bomb to his neck and forced him to rob the bank he pleaded with the police telling them that he was not a willing accomplice in all of this this is not me he said and then he shouted it's going to go off i'm not lying but the thing is, he was lying about the three black men that attacked mm. him. It wasn't three black men at all that did it. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of weird to lie about. Yeah. I mean, it kind of like, I mean, going back to, I, I do like to go back to other podcasts, but it's like when um, the uh, the Axemen in New Orleans, when the chick like blamed the neighbors oh, yeah. instead of just trying to get the actual dude. Yeah. Like, oh, those fucking other grocers. So yeah, it's, why, just tell him who did it. I mean, he knows. Yeah. But yeah, the police, they didn't believe his story, although they weren't taking any chances at the bomb. So they believed the bomb was probably real, Mm. but they didn't believe his story. Yeah. And remember how he mentioned that he was a little slow? Well, one of the last things that Brian says before he dies was asking one of the officers if they called his boss because he was concerned that his boss would think that he was like either quitting or messing around or not doing a good job. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if they know yet if he was quitting or not or... (laughs) Like, that motherfucker, where did he, did he quit? I'm going to blow that fuck. Nah, that's, that sucks. Yeah. But I mean, that would not be any normal person. That would not be my last thought. Yeah. Will we please let my boss know? Yeah, it's not family or anything. It's, man, I don't want to get fired from that pizza job. <laughs> Here's a super gay pizza delivery guy from our old videos. <laughs> Damn it, I hope like anybody gets that joke besides no us. Will. I know. So that wasn't um, a bad comment. We made a video, and there is a guy in it who's the super gay pizza. That the super gay pizza delivery. I'm not really doing it justice or making it sound any better. Yeah. But yeah, I got nowhere to go. I mean, with he that. will get you the most bombing ass pizza you'll ever have, though. So the device around his neck starts to emit a beeping noise, and the beeping starts to accelerate. Mm. Why isn't anybody trying to get this thing off me? He shouts. And this next part is all captured on video. Oh yeah. Brian Wells, while sitting on the ground, handcuffed behind his back and panicking, he begins to scoot backwards. Then suddenly, the bomb explodes, killing him instantly. 
And three minutes later, Bomb Squad arrived. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, that's not funny. Poor Brian. Yeah. I, uh, they, I don't know if they just didn't believe him, but when it started beeping, you would think somebody would have yeah. cared. But I like how I, in the video you see people walk over him, over to him like afterwards. And there's like, I don't even think they, I think one guy kind of jogs, and I think some other guys just like walk. I think they walk over so cavalier, though. It really is like somebody was like, oh, hey, there's two squirrels banging outside. Like <laughs> yeah. they just walk. What should we watch? The guy who's fucking got blown up by a homemade <laughs> like neck bomb, or should we watch these squirrels? <laughs> yeah, bang? dude, they walk over like it's nothing. They're all like fucking reamer in basketball <laughs> watching that bird on that branch. <laughs> And it was believed that the bomb was set off by the perpetrators that were watching them. Because remember in the note, they said they'd be watching them at all times. Hmm. And so it's believed that they took him out so he wouldn't like tell any information or anything like that. Yeah. I respect them for that. <laughs> Complete <laughs> respect. You respect the guys who blew, who fucking murdered that guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you can't tell their sweet little treat secrets. Oh. Uh, that so was a- Andrew. Andrew. If you had the bomb collar on your neck and it was beeping, what would be the last thing you'd yell out before you died? Kevin, these are my sweet treats for you, baby. Oh, uh, <laughs> I want to strap a bomb to you just to hear that. <laughs> so after the explosion, the police then searched his vehicle and found the shotgun cane as well as the written instructions. And I believe that it stated he had 55 minutes total to carry out the task. Mm. And I've read different sources online that have listed different times that Brian supposedly would have had to finish everything. Yeah. But almost all the sources I looked up stated that there is no way he oh, could yeah. have actually completed it even by gaining extra time. So this was just like a fucking lose lose. No matter what, he yeah. wasn't going to I think they were going to kill him this. regardless. Yeah. It, it, they didn't it say that the cops actually tried to do it themselves to to see like the like how long it would take them. Yeah, they did. Mm. The um the police traveled the route and they said no matter what Brian did, there's no way he could have won the scavenger hunt game even if he did everything correctly and mm. at a good speed. So they were just going to kill this dude. Yeah, that's bullshit. I don't respect these guys now. Oh, you that's bullshit. Finally took you, it back. You don't mind that he that they fucking murdered him, but you're upset they get, didn't give him enough time. No, yeah. that's Dude. fucking false advertising. <laughs> <laughs> so the only question is who did this? So mm. they really had no idea who did this at first. Yeah. Illuminati. <laughs> oh, well, well, righty. Well, right. well, thanks for thanks. listening, guys. <laughs> So, all right, this whole case is fucking weird as fuck already, right? Oh, yeah. It's about to get a lot fucking weirder. It is. The police went to the radio tower where Wells was said to have been captured. The police found Wells' footprints in the dirt, but they couldn't find any evidence of who the captors were. Then they noticed a man pacing by his house that was nearby who lived next to the tower. So the police went over and questioned him. His name was Bill Rothstein. And he talked to the police and let them look around. He claimed to have no idea what they're really talking about. And he mm. said he didn't know what happened. Mm. And the police believed him. And they didn't really suspect him of having anything to do with it. So the police left. Yeah. It's reasonable. It's reasonable. It's, it's yeah. Intelligent, smart, yeah. sexy, all that stuff. Yeah, all this is sexy. And l- very sexy. So sexy. And less than a month later, Rothstein called 911 and said at 8645 Peach Street in the garage... There is a frozen body. Mm. It's in the freezer. So yeah. This is the guy the police just fucking mm. searched his property and talked to him. Yeah. So the police came. They found the body. And then Rothstein was soon in custody. He told the cops that he's been in agony for weeks because of this body. And he thought about killing himself over it. He even wrote a suicide note that the police found. And this is where it gets really fucking weird. Yeah. The suicide note starts off by saying this has nothing to do with the Wells case. Yeah. Rothstein claimed that he had nothing to do with killing the man in his freezer. He didn't participate in the murder. He said that an ex-girlfriend of his had called him up and explained that she had gotten into a money dispute with him. His name is Jim Roden. That's the name of the dead man in the freezer. And so she murdered him with a 12-gauge. Yeah. So his ex-girlfriend's name was Marjorie, I think, Deal Armstrong. We're just going to call her Mark Armstrong. No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. No, yes, we're call Mark. Her, we'll just call her Marjorie. She was an ex-girlfriend. They dated in the 1960s, which that fucking long ago, it's mm. 2003. Yeah, like 40-something years. That fucking long years. ago, 
And she called asking for help to remove a dead body and cleaning up her home. And this yeah. fucking idiot does it. Dude, I wouldn't even do that for my girlfriend now. No. Yeah, fuck you. Fucking 40 years ago. Imagine yeah. a girl you dated 40 fucking years ago. is like, hey, I murdered my ex-boyfriend. I need help just uh, getting rid of the body and cleaning my house. Yeah. What a fucking bitch to, like, I, not her. I mean, she's a bitch. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. What a bitch move of this guy to fucking help her with that. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. Gabe. You just described my, like, my whole life. I'm I mean, sorry, Andrew. I mean, you so did, why did you, Andrew, it, why did you? you help get rid of this body yeah Dude, no, i fucking and, loved her man i mean it's it's, it's also it's just kind of weird that you know you're, you still love my mom after all those years <laughs> oh, sorry man i love who i love i can't help it so he helped get rid of the body he even got rid of the murder weapon for her, and he was supposed to grind up the body yeah but he ultimately couldn't do it yeah and a little fyi marjorie she's kind of a notorious person because she had a long list of ex-boyfriends, ex-lovers that all seemed to die in different ways. Yeah, that whole thing was really weird. And I, and it may have been like answered. I, I never found it. Why the fuck did she call this dude? Like uh, after forty something years, yeah. like was that was that anywhere? Like no, like who who's like man? I did date that guy like almost like a no. fucking century ago. Like let yeah. me call him up. You know, For like. Real. Like, who Makes calls no him? Sense. Yeah. 40 fucking years. Yeah, like, that's hey, so Hey, I have long. a small problem. Let's see. Well, I got in an argument with my boyfriend over money. I murdered him. I need help. Could you maybe come get the body, get rid of it, clean up my place, get rid of the weapons, and then grind up the fucking yeah. body? Like, dude, like, this is the equivalent of just being like, hey, that bitch at, like, the Circle K I go to all the time. She seems nice. Let me call her. Yeah. Like, that's pretty much the same thing. This girl must have something special about her, Andrew. What do you think it is? Uh, what is it, Andrew? She's got that sweet pussy, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yes. Fuck. All right. Crack the case. Uh. On September 21st, the next day after Rothstein called 911, Marjorie was arrested for the murder of Jim Roden. And in 2005, after pleading guilty but mentally ill, mm. she was sentenced to 7 to 20 years in prison. Yeah. But a year before that, mm. in 2004, Rothstein had died of lymphoma. Yeah, yeah. So what does all of this have to do with Brian Wells, you may be thinking? Well, Marjorie said that she had some information that the police would be interested in if they could swing a deal with her to get her moved to a minimum security prison. What kind of information? Well, remember how Rothstein's suicide note began with, this has nothing to do with the Wells case? Well, the murder of Jim Roden had everything to do with the Brian Wells case. And then the suicide note that Rothstein had written was, in fact, a lie. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that also, shit, Andrew? Blows my fucking mind. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yes. Also, when people ask to be moved to, like, a minimum security prison, isn't that basically being like, hey, can we go somewhere that I can escape from? For, I, I don't know, dude. But escape, she would not. I mean, yeah. Unless you're talking about escaping the Earth, because this <laughs> fucking bitch dies. Yeah. Well, I mean, she was probably on that uh, that spaceship with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with T and Doe, so... <laughs> So she said that she had nothing to do with the actual plot of Brian Wells or the bomb or anything like that, but she knew all about it. And she said she even supplied the timers that were used on the bomb. And during the bank robbery, she said that she was within one mile of it all. But the most shocking part of her discussions with the police was that Brian Wells was not just a victim. He had actually helped plan it and was part of the whole thing. While Rothstein was the mastermind of it all. Andrew, mm. what do you think about that shit? The pizza guy was in on it? Yeah, come on, Andrew. Well, I fucking agree with all of these things. <laughs> if you can't trust the, the fucking pizza guy, Andrew, who can you trust? The cashier at Sears. Oh, oh. oh he's got us. He's got us there. Yeah, for the next fucking like year and a half till they're all shut down. How is that place <laughs> in that business I, I don't know, dude. I mean, it's... You can still find a blockbuster here and there. That's true. Pretty sure there's like three of them still around. So. <laughs> Kev, you want to go work there with us? Yes, I do. For a week. Now, the reason that the police were so eager to meet with her was because they had been interviewing people about her all along as they had suspected that she was actually one of the people behind the collar bomb plot. And rumor had it that she was telling people in jail all about the case and even said that she had killed Rodin because he was going to tell people about the robbery. Mm. So, so many like things get figured out because in jail people talk about it. Like, oh, yeah, yeah like I'm OJ. pleading not guilty to this case. Yeah. And then you fucking go in jail and tell the people yeah. all about it. Yeah. How fucking stupid are I, you? Like how I don't know. I like how those people still act like they're innocent afterwards. Yeah. It's like see <laughs> yeah. I mean you can't just act like you're innocent the whole time. Like you like only when you're like 
around people or on camera or something, you act like you didn't do it, but then you're talking, oh, yeah, I did it. I totally did yeah. it. Well, I did it the whole time. OJ was fucking ass. He didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah That's true. I mean, that well, we true. talked all about that. If you haven't listened to our OJ episode, check it out. It's yeah. pretty much just an hour of us saying how he is innocent. We oh, agree yeah. with him. Oh, we agree the whole time. And, <laughs> no, <laughs> we know. That fucker is so guilty. Oh, dude. yeah, dude. He did it. But he did have a good rap song. He did. So Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually the... Um, getting hot in here by uh <laughs> the, the <laughs> imagine oj singing that imagine oj <laughs> he just got out like after the he just served his time yeah. for was stealing back his memorabilia yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah yeah and everyone's like oj let's go out for a drink let's fucking let's just relax it's karaoke night let's go there he's like all right yeah let's go let's go karaoke i'll do it and they're like all right oj we uh, let's sign up for karaoke let's sing a song he's like all right i'm gonna sing one of my favorite songs <laughs> And you guys just relax, have a good time, and just watch the magic happen. Yeah. So they call him up to the stage like, O.J. Simpson, you're up. And everyone's cheering, O.J., O.J. <laughs> O.J. grabs the mic. There's like one light on him. The song starts. Where is your boy tonight? I hope he is a gentleman. And he's doing like the fucking Aerosmith microphone stand thing with it while he's singing. Maybe he won't find out what I know. Oh, we never. Dude, those fucking lyrics say, dude, fit a it could, Yeah, dude. Every single bit of that did. You were the last good thing about this part of town. Oh what God. the but, fuck? But he's talking about Ron Goldman the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Dude, we got super off track oh, with fuck, that. Yeah, my bad. I love it so all. So back, back to the case. In late 2005... A TV repairman by the name of Kenneth Barnes was turned in by his brother-in-law after he had revealed details of the plans to him. Watch, why would you reveal anything? Like, if you're part of any murder plot, just keep mm. that shit to yourself. Yeah, it's. I mean, I heard when they uh, when they arrested him, like they were like, uh, yeah, "What's your name, sir?" He's like, "I am repairman, man, man, man." <laughs> Uh, the, the all that joke that I mean, hopefully a lot of people got that. <laughs> oh, you got some, Andrew? I was just gonna crack a joke, but that was better than mine. Crack it right <laughs> dude, now, dude, dude. Do it. Crack it like a. I forget it now. His was good. I was lying. <sighs> so. Andrew, your entrance was good. His was better. <laughs> so Barnes told investigators that for a reduced sentence, I would tell you the whole story. I'm sure he didn't sound like that. I'm sure this guy sounds like a fucking hillbilly. No, he sounded like Well, that. for a reduced sentence, <laughs> tell you the whole goddamn story. He's he probably drink. had to tell it to a white cop. <laughs> While he's drinking, he's drinking. While he's doing it, he's drinking a Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> I don't know why every country guy I see just drinks Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> so by telling the whole story, it is revealed that Marjorie was actually the mastermind of the entire plan. And she was doing this all to get money in order to pay Barnes to kill her father so that she would get the inheritance. Yeah. Which, that is the exact fucking plot to 30 minutes or less. Yeah, dude, the whole thing. those creators yeah. of that movie claim yeah. they didn't know about this case. Yeah. They didn't steal from this case. Also, they said they were maybe possibly have heard about it. It's yeah. a, you can't fucking make that up. Yeah, also. It's so specific. Also, the uh, the fact that they didn't give him enough time is also in 30 minutes or less. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Yeah, like that whole thing. Well, I also heard Danny McBride is part of this case, too. So <laughs> <laughs> he also did it, so. So Barnes pled guilty and was sentenced to 45 years in prison, but it was reduced to 20 for saying the whole story to the police. And Marjorie would soon be found guilty of multiple accounts and be sentenced to life plus 30 years. Mm. But in 2017, she died from breast cancer. Goodbye, bitch. <laughs> That's what you get. So You're long and thanks. Yeah, bitch. Marjorie, what's that from? Uh, it's from something with somebody saying Marjorie. Rob Schneider saying that. Yeah, dude, it is. What is oh that? Oh my from? god, it is. It, what is that from? Marjorie. What is Fuck. that? Is that like Deuce? But what is that, dude? That's got to be hot chick. Is that the? Is it, it is a hot it's chick. The mom's name. Yeah, it, it is a hot chick. Oh I don't think it's god. the mom's name, but I don't remember what it is. But yeah, it's from the hot chick. So that is the actual whole case of this. It's fucking super strange, super weird. But we got a few bits of odd information. Was Brian Wells actually in on it all? His family and friends say there's no way he would have. Yeah. The police were convinced that he was in on it. Mm. I don't know. Like, there is story of of where supposedly Brian Wells was in on it all, but the bomb was supposed to be fake. Yeah. And then as soon as he found out it was real, 
he didn't want anything to do with it, but they mm. forced him at gunpoint to put it on. So yeah. he was kind of like tricked into it. Like, I feel like if it was, I don't think he knew any of the stuff that was going on. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, the dude was slow. You can tell. The, the only thing that confuses me is, like, that, I mean, it would fit on the side of him being in on it. Mm. If it's against your will and you have a bomb around your neck, why are you going to fucking grab a sucker off the bank counter, put yeah. it in your mouth, and I mean, then walk out. I mean, uh, similar to, to Brian Willis, there's a lot of holes in this story. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. It had to be said, dude. And during the documentary, mm-hmm. this guy telling the story, he's like, and Brian Wells, with the bomb collar around his neck, pulled the T-shirt over to cover the bomb. He's For like, what? To cover the bomb to try and hide. Like, he was putting the T-shirt on to cover the bomb to hide it. How do you fucking hide it? It looks it's a like bomb. it fucking looks like Brian Wells stole one of Shaq's boxes <laughs> that his fucking sneakers came in and like strapped <laughs> it, it to his, his chest. Yeah. Like you're not fucking hiding that. Yeah, yeah. So it looked like the workaholics episode where they yeah, the do the bike, bike chain, chain on their yeah. fuck. Dude, yeah. wor- worse than that, but yeah, oh, yeah, man. pretty much like a double version of that. So, yeah, the police believe that Wells was, in fact, in on it, but his family doesn't. And some people consider this case unsolved. Mm. And there was actually another man in on it all who went free for cooperating. Yeah, Andrew. Oh, Michael Myers? <laughs> Fuck yeah. So, Andrew, how did you get away free from all this? I'm a fucking genius. Well, I heard, <laughs> I heard uh, like, they, they told him, like, wait a couple years and you have to, like, put out a story and we'll let you go free. And that's why uh, Kevin Spacey's in all that trouble. Uh- <laughs> A good one, and it's not going to be as funny coming after that. Oh uh, shit, Tell my bad. It, no, I was going to say I'm the motherfucking lizard king. Dude, that wasn't Kevin oh, yeah. Spacey. No, but I was saying that before you said that. Oh my bad. That's why I said it's not as funny. Oh, gotcha. That. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, so Floyd Stockton was the name of the other man who was in on it, and supposedly he gave the police all, all this information, so he didn't get in any trouble for it yeah but he knew of the robbery the police said they also believe that he actually carried the bomb to rothstein so Mm. i don't know how much he had in creating it but he's the one who delivered it and Mm. i believe it was barnes who said stockton was the one who divvied up the money and everything Mm. like that so a little bit about stockton though he is actually a registered sex offender Mm. and a rapist nice so even with that in your history, mm. I don't care what kind of information you give the fucking police. Yeah. How do you not get, how do you walk well, away free from all this? I heard it's because, uh, like, I mean, he was saying he just only assisted in the crime, and those Stocktons are really good at assists. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah, <laughs> yes, dude. dude. That was fucking awesome. I was dude. so hoping you would bring that oh, dude up. That was I, good I, shit. I, I, I had that joke in my head this whole time. So at the end of this case, you got the pizza, the pizza delivery guy who's dead. You got the girl who masterminded it all is dead. Mm. The other guy who had a, who was dating the girl who tried to take care of some of the stuff, he's dead. The one guy walks away, and mm. there's only one guy in jail, so a lot of people are like feel like there's no justice done. Mm. Not I mean, really. One guy walked away free. Everyone else died early. Yeah. If the dude was in on it, I guess, but I don't think he was, so I think like somebody yeah. was just straight up murdered. I don't know. I'm like on the fence. Like I said, the whole sucker in the mouth thing. Yeah. Uh, the whole fucker right in the pussy. No, but the sucker. <laughs> what if that? What if it what was if that he guy? If, they, that. if anyone puts a bomb on the fucker right in the pussy guy, I promise you right now, I will fucking kill you. You <laughs> leave him alone. He's like the last national treasure. Yeah. Oh my god. He's yeah. like the only good thing left in this world. It's all right though, dude. Nobody's getting to the tooth, so we're good. <laughs> But yeah, so that's all the information I got in this case. Was there anything else you guys wanted to add in, or it's just, it's fucking weird? Yeah, it's just a big rabbit hole, man. It's it's nuts. I'm just happy I got to crack the Stockton joke. I I wasn't sure if you were gonna bring that guy up. Yeah, and I, I'm happy, Andrew, that by working with the police, you actually didn't have to serve any time. So yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, thanks for calling me a sex offender, bud. Thanks. <laughs> Oh shit! I forgot about that part. Yeah, we all knew, Andrew. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's uh, no. <laughs> all right. So, anything else before we wrap it up? Well, I think that he was in on it. Mm. Okay. Up until just because of that sucker thing, I agree with the sucker yeah, thing. Yeah, that throws it, it doesn't off makes, for me. That doesn't make sense. He's cocky as shit at that point. Yeah. But then I think after he gets the police involved, he knows he's like, oh fuck. Yeah. They're gonna. 
you know, there was probably something said about if you're caught in any way like that, you're done. So mm. then after that's when he started freaking out. And I, I do kind of agree with Andrew on that part because then he went the way of fucking Ben Stiller from Cable Guy and just started saying it was like black people. You know, I'm pretty sure, sure it they was were an Asian, Asian gang yeah. or something. So like it, he, he knows who did it. He like yeah. were any of them black? I don't know. No, none th- of them yeah. were black. So, so that's why that's another thing. But they also said there's rumor that they told him that if he gets caught to mm. say that three black men did it. Mm. And they also said he was in on it the whole time. And like the gun cane and all the instructions were used just in case he got caught to like lie about it, which mm. is, I don't know. It's, it's all yeah, weird. I mean, it is, it is a pretty weird case, but yeah, like him saying that it was black people kind of does make it seem like it probably was him. Yeah. Cause I mean, no offense to black people, but that's an easy scapegoat. And I guess um, they have like a little bit of video of him walking in the bank. When he walks in, he says something about how he's here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. <laughs> oh, fuck yes, dude. Damn, they live. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes. I mean, uh, fuck, I was going to crack an obey <laughs> joke or whatever. Dude, dude. I don't remember. I didn't know where to go with it. Just the obey and watch TV shit. I, I didn't know where to go with it, though. So, alrighty, that's our episode for today. Just thank you to everyone that's been tuning in and listening and downloading our episodes and reaching out to us on social media. That's been super awesome. It has. And you can find us on iTunes. You can also find us on Stitcher, although we don't have any idea how that works really Mm -hmm. at all. And you can also find us on our Libsyn page. Yeah, just special thanks to everyone that's been rating and reviewing and subscribing. So keep that up. If everyone listening could give us a review and share this with a friend that would mean the world to us we're trying to grow and not blow uh, up by a fucking pizza collar bomb <laughs> we really do like get excited about like every download too like that's it not does. a lie yeah like we yeah. we check them a lot in 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 snapchat and text each other back and forth about how many we have so definitely Tell some people about it. Um, Andrew's going to crack a porn joke. So, Andrew. Andrew. Actually, it wasn't. I was going to say our views and downloads are over 9,000. Oh, oh 9, yes. But you do all this up to crack the porn so, joke. I was going to. And in case you haven't noticed, we did have a time machine to jump back fucking 12 years to, to make that joke. So, <laughs> if anyone from 12 years ago is listening, you're going to love that part. Oh, yes. Also, um... If you if I mean, if we go back even further, um, if you guys just you know stop this whole thing from happening, I mean that'd be cool too. <laughs> and watch the movie The Happening. It's fucking great. Oh. It's really good. You're gonna be intrigued on the edge of your seats, the, reaching for the yeah. fucking power button on oh, the yeah. TV to shut that shit off. There, that movie fucking sucks. There are more holes in uh, that movie than. Brian oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, Andrew. I want some words of wisdom. From you before we shut this down. All right. As I always say, those little advertisements on, you know, all of you guys watch porn at some point. We know it. Yeah. So the best way to get our downloads and views is if you click on those little advertisements Mm. and that's how you're going to get. Yeah, That's that's not going to be a virus or anything at all. (laughs) It's it's legit. For some reason, uh, also, they bring it up in an episode of Seinfeld. I don't know. I can't do a Seinfeld impression. That was good. Andrew, let's hear your Seinfeld impression. I don't know. Oh, oh. That was Jerry, get out of here. We're <laughs> fucking doing a podcast. We said impressions, not the real thing. Kramer comes walking in. Yeah. All righty, guys. Thanks for listening. Be good. Stay safe. And laugh at the dark stuff. This month, get a five-quart jug of Napa Full Synthetic Motor Oil plus a Napa Platinum Oil Filter for $21.98. That's a pretty unbelievable deal. But trust us, it's totally real, but only for a limited time. So get Napa Full Synthetic and a Napa Platinum Oil Filter for $21.98 today. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. General States pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer ends for $30.19. Napa Know How. 
It's Love Your Car Month at Napa. And to show your car the love, get a Napa bucket for $2.99 and save 20% on almost everything you can fit inside, like car wash, car wax, and tire shine. So save some cash and look good doing it by getting 20% off with the Napa bucket. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, exclusions apply. Minimum three items may not be combined with other offers. Offer ends 4 30